new 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 it's new product time it's new product time <clears throat> everybody's favorite time and you're ready for the account you can sign up for new 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 it's our new weekly newsletter we only send it to you if you want it, so you have to kind of try hard. You to have get to try it. hard to sign up. We're not, yeah. There's no pop-ups. There's no like yeah. automatic subscription, but you can get a weekly newsletter. Yeah. Okay. First up, Altium badge. Many people who watch our shows or are in our community. We have an eagle badge. We have a Kai Cat badge. We have Kai Cat. We have eagle. Altium. Mm -hmm. Many of the people I look up to use Altium. Um, I haven't, but I'm like, hey, there's people who want to be proud of whatever they learned. So we have a lovely embroidered badge. You can sew it on or you can iron it on. It's got this really cool, like, gold uh, uh, thread. It's like metallic y. Mm -hmm. It's not like metallic, metallic but it's, it's, it's shimmery and uh, looks really good. And uh, show your pride. Yeah. If you live in Altium, you want this. Okay. And if you use Altium, this could be free. This is for you. If you learned it, want to award it, they have free version. Give it to a kid. Okay, next up, Spudger. <laughs> next up, Spudger. Well, uh, yes, this is a Spudger. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, it's called Spudger. Here so, are we. Here are we, thank you. So this is a, an interesting tool. And this is, again, a tool that like I use. And so I was like, you know what? I think this would be handy to um, put it in the, st in the shop, in the store, for people to purchase. So it's basically a double-ended like prying tool. Okay, so you know how whenever you have to open a box... Um, or like an enclosure and you end up using a knife or your keys or like a screwdriver and you end up kind of like making things worse. Well, this is actually the tool you should be using. This is a prying tool. I've also seen it used for getting underneath uh, chips when hot air reworking. So, you know, you, you, you hot air and, you know, you want to pry the chip up. How do you pry from underneath? Well, this is a nice uh, <coughs> slim shim that you can go in under and then keep hot airing and then that chip will pop off or you could use with a uh, solder braid. Um, maybe I'll show it on the overhead. Okay, so yes, it's it's kind of long. It's got this nice knurling over here. And then there's two edges. There's um, this end, which is a sharp point. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of a taper um, so that you, know, you can wedge this point in and it'll get you started. And then you can use this rounded edge, which is a little uh, softer, but has a kind of a wider angle of attack. And uh, you can go in and slowly wedge into your enclosure or box. So I use this a lot now. Um, this is a really high quality one. I, I had, we had a desk of data where I tried out a bunch of spudgers and um, some of them were kind of cheap. They worked, but I, th I thought like, you know, I want something better quality. This one is stainless steel. It's really nice. Uh, it's super durable. You can also use it as a letter opener but it's great for um, getting into enclosures and projects, especially ones that are yeah. glued or plastic or whatever, have tape in them, getting under chips, or just, you know, I actually use it now just for poking and prodding parts on a circuit board. Yeah. If I want to like poke a part into a location. Um, this tip is a little bit, uh, has a little bit more surface area than a pair of tweezers, so uh, things kind of go in the direction I want. Okay. So, and spudger tool. The stars of the show tonight besides you are all this stuff. From? Pi board, uh, MicroPython. Yeah, this these is are Pi boards from MicroPython. Damien George. So yeah. we have a new Pi board. This is the Pi board Lite. And uh, we've carried the Pi board for like at least a year, more, maybe two years now. Uh, it's a board that has uh, MicroPython running on it. It's a mic uh, MicroPython interpreter. It basically runs Python 3.4. It's really amazing. It has an internal um, memory system. But you can also plug it in SD card, and it will show up like a disk drive, and you can access it from within Python. Uh, you can connect to um, the REPL through USB. Um, the people really like the Pi board, uh, but some people don't need the full power of uh, the Pi board chip. It's... Um, I think it's like 180 megahertz and it's got a full megabyte of flash and a ton of RAM. The Pi Board Lite is a little bit less expensive and has a slightly slower and slightly smaller microcontroller. It's still quite fast. It's totally capable of running um, MicroPython and doing a lot with it. It's just not as advanced a chip as the Pi Board. And so if you want to build a project and maybe you want to have the the, you don't need that power and you want to spend a little bit less, uh, the Pi Board Lite is there for you. It's otherwise pin compatible. Yeah. Um, we also have this header set. So these are sold. Oh, the, this, sorry, this shows it with the headers Yeah, we're going to go to the LCD, then we'll go to the header set. Okay. Actually, so, no, let's skip around. So this is it, the header set installed. Yes. But check this out. 
Beautiful Peterson. headers. These are beautiful headers that you can solder in. We sell the ply board without the headers installed because some people want a really slim board and some people want to add them. With some very simple soldering, you can uh, solder in all of these header plugs and you can plug in all sorts of Python skins, as they're called. Yeah. Um, so here it is assembled, as you yeah. saw before. And then you want to get a LCD? Can you go to the case next, actually? Because that's actually kind of cool. That was a good... Um, segue, as it were. So this is a beautiful anodized MicroPython case. It's got the MicroPython logo on it. It's this gorgeous two-piece anodized aluminum enclosure. It fits both pie board and pie board light. And you can see the slot in the top. Um, so after you snap your pie board in, you have access to all of the headers. So if you go to that photo, you can see ah, the headers come out. It's beautiful. So can you show this on the overhead? Yeah, let me show some more photos real quick. Lovely job. Yes, yeah, so you can see get to all the ports. There's two buttons, and then you can get to the USB and SD card slot. Yeah. And this is it with the uh, LCD on it. So you can see you can access the headers. Yeah. Okay. And the back it is beautiful. So this is the um, Pi case. So you can see I've got the Pi board in it. It has four screws. It's incredibly durable. Um, you have the slot here. I'm not exactly sure what that slot's about, but you can see your pins and maybe you can fit some circuitry inside. Uh, there's a button for user, so the user accessible button, and the reset button that will reset the MicroPython microcontroller. And then these are all the headers. They're labeled very nicely. So this you is can, cool. This is one of the best cases. This is really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, Damien George does an excellent job. It's, it's a really great case. Um, it has these little micro holes that for the LEDs, for status LEDs. You, you can't see it on the overhead, but... Um, trust me, you can you can see LEDs shine through, and then you have, see the SD card slot and the micro USB yeah. connector. And I like this like curve; it's protective. It comes out and just protects the SD card, uh, so you can remove it easily, but doesn't get bumped. And then, of course, what's nice about this is that you can still plug in accessories. So this is um, the TFT, and we'll talk about this in a moment. But I have this yeah. nice demo that automatically runs. Let me see if it'll run. Maybe I have to hit the reset button. No, well, I have some photos. There you go. So this Whoa. is the TFT. It's a 160 by uh, 128 color display with a touch screen on top as well. You can see it's very fast. And here's a Python rendering of Mandelbrot uh, dynamically in Python. This isn't a GIF. It's actually calculating that Mandelbrot set and displaying it on the TFT Damien is a physicist, and he did cosmic background radiation research, so this is the type of thing you get. This is what you get. Um, but what's cool is you can see, even though it's running a Python interpreter and this is the Pi board light, uh, look at how fast the updates are. I mean, it's, it's speedy. You get text, you get colors, you get animation, um, and, you know, it snaps very nicely onto um, the okay. case And here's some the photos headers. of the... LCD. Yeah, so it's 1.8 inch or 2 inch diameter, something like that, 2 inch uh, diagonal, um, with a touchscreen controller built in, so you can use, you can have a touch uh, interface, and of course, 16-bit uh, color pixels, uh, I think 160 by 120 or so. Yeah. And this is the TFT skin. All right, good work, Lady Aiden. And with that, da, 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 new products. That was yes. it? Yes. Good work. And I do recommend, uh, I do want to add, add in, in as we leave new products, um, uh, Damien George has done an amazing job with MicroPython. Yep. Um, he's worked so hard on it for yep. many years. Uh, people support his Kickstarters. Uh, if you like MicroPython or if you like CircuitPython, uh, yeah. which is uh, based on MicroPython, please support yep. Damien by picking up some of his awesome boards. This is how he funds uh, the research and the work he's yeah. doing on MicroPython. We donated to MicroPython.org, his company, and we also proudly stock his products, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll continue to do so. The, you also have these badges? The core of what CircuitPython is based off of mm -hmm. is MicroPython. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Damon. Yes. And all the contributors. Yes. Okay, Lady Ada, we're going to...